F1 cars are the heaviest they've ever been. And for the first season in a while, F1 teams are struggling to get their cars down to the minimum weight of 795 kilograms after a last minute three kilogram addition. The cars of 20 years ago were over 150 kilograms lighter. So why has this happened? Which bits are heaviest? And what are teams doing to shed some fat? Well, Scarbs is back for some F1 engineering. The majority of the teams are maybe five to 10 kilograms over. Um, one or two teams, as we understand, are on the weight limit. Obviously, I aren't happy that the weight limit's being played about with slightly uh, within the regulations having work to meet that what was supposed to be a fixed target. At this weight, the cars are you know, incredibly heavy. You have to balance that out with they've got over a thousand horsepower. So the power to weight ratio is still you know, on a par with what it's ever been through um, F1's period, apart from perhaps maybe the early turbo period where the cars were very light, um, very powerful, but equally very unsafe. And that really is kind of the story of the, uh, the weight increase over the years. Now, it's important to note that the 795 kilograms includes 80 kilograms for the driver, plus their helmet, overalls, hands device, and boots, and so on. So the overall weight of the car is actually 715 kilograms, of course, without fuel. On a slight side note, F1 cars in the mid 70s and early 80s were legally supposed to be around 550 kilograms. But F1 engineers, as ever, found ways to bend the rules just a little bit. The cars are made of aluminium. You had a relatively basic uh, Cosworth engine in the back of the majority of these cars. Cosworth engine was about 130, 140 kilograms on its own big chunk of the car. Even then, you had some of the teams, certainly the ones running the Cosworth DFEs, were actually ballasting the cars with huge water tanks in the side pods to get up to that minimum weight. And they would only need to actually be at that weight when they were weighed after the race, they could top up fluids, which included these huge water tanks, which were used for either engine water injection or brake cooling. Obviously there were none of the sort, but it did allow the teams to run underweight in the race and still make the minimum weight as the regulation stood at the time. By the way, if you haven't signed up to our free weekly F1 newsletter, join us by clicking the link below. So it's clear the cars are heavy and the teams are finding it hard to shed weight. But where is all this weight and which parts are the heaviest? So first of all, we can take away 80 kilograms for the driver, so seven, 15 kilograms. Then you see what's changed in the regulations this year. So straight away, the wheels and tires have got a lot heavier this year because you've got a bigger wheel and a much stronger tire to cope with the lower profile that it has. The rear tire itself now with the wheel is 21 kilograms. You add all of the wheels up, that's 80 kilograms. That's 10% of the car's weight is just in the wheels and tires. The power unit, which again, lots of people blame, which I don't think is entirely fair, at 150 kilograms is what, maybe 15% uh, of the uh, the car's weight. I don't know the exact maths, so do excuse me. But again, that's a big chunk of weight. But then other things have changed this year. The biggest regulation changes apart from the tires uh, are in the areas largely of safety. So first of all, you've got an increased impact test for the, the front, the rear and the side of the car, 15% uh, increase in the energy that these structures need to absorb. And the only way you can do that with such optimized structures already, and the shapes of them are actually much more um, sympathetic to crash tests than they have been in recent years, is just to add material, you know, it's unavoidable. So the crash structures are much heavier. You've got a front anti-intrusion panel, which weighs a couple of kilograms. You've got extra tethers for the rear impact structure and for the rear wing, that adds weight, you know, roll structure and what have you. So safety has always increased the weight of the cars. And if you certainly compare with the weight of the car now, back to the 80s, even the sort of the pre senna uh, 90s era, most of the weight change is in the safety. So there's a chunk of weight added to increase safety, and I'm sure we're all behind that. But another reason are the changes around budget and trying to save the teams a bit of money. Spec components, and you have what they call open source components. Now, while spec components, the teams just have to use them, and one example of that are the wheel covers, which get added to the wheel. Um, you would really want them to be in carbon fiber, but of course then with the amount of wheels that you get through in a race weekend, each team get through you know, 100 wheels, paying for 100 carbon wheel covers is expensive. So they're 3D printed in a sort of plastic 
resin and that adds weight um, but not cost so there's a trade-off there and then you have these open source components which are components that the team still design like the brake gallopers for example but they then have to put the the CAD and all the data for them available on a cloud server that all the teams can get access to so they're not encouraged to be really innovative with these part designs because everyone else can just copy them and gain the advantage and you're basically spending development time that can be shared freely with other teams so parts like that tend to start getting a little heavier as well and then overall you have the aerodynamics of the cars the shape of the front wing the rear wing but especially the floor if you think of the shape of the floor previously it was much shorter uh, it was much better supported around the car it had much less loads on it now you have a much larger floor there's much higher load you've got much more areas of it where it's not very well supported at the front and at the back so the floor now is a very heavy component and again that is fixed to the wheelbase of the car so the longer your car the heavier your floor is going to be so what can the teams do in terms of lap time and impact on tire wear weight is expensive of course the teams will want to reduce weight as much as possible but on already well developed cars that's not as easy as you might think they're restricted by several things first of all the budget cap they can't just go out and make a lighter component really quickly get rid of the old one because that will soon stack up the price in parts every time they introduce a new part to the race car it goes onto the budget so that has to be accounted for equally developing new parts takes up time at the factory uh, in terms of paying for the staff to develop these parts and the components and the materials to make them. If it's an aero part, that will need to be taken through the wind tunnel. And again, they've got restricted wind tunnel time. Do they develop parts that are lighter or do they develop parts that are make the car faster or some blend of the two? You know, there's quite a quandary for them. So teams will be looking throughout every aspect of the car to find areas where they can save weight. Now, one of the things everyone's noticed that the cars this year are much blacker than they used to be. The liveries have got much more bare carbon fiber. This isn't some sort of marketing trend of, you know, like matte paint was. It was basically paint costs weight. So you take the paint off, you save yourself some kilos, but not kilos, hundreds of grams perhaps. So that's one thing. Other aspects, you know, suspension components, braking components, uh, the engine's pretty much fixed, so there's not much they can do there. They won't be changing the, the tubs themselves or the crash structures because they're all homologated. It'll be very hard for them, so it's all the detail components. And this isn't just the teams that they'll be weighing in on. I've known in the past where the teams have been overweight, where they really lean on all of their parts suppliers. So anything coming into the team from a third party, even seat belts, the little cutouts in the metal brackets and um, parts that you pull down on the seat belts, they all uh, get pushed, the suppliers get pushed to say grams, and we are talking about just ones or twos of grams across, across the thousands of parts on a car, that soon as adds up to a kilogram. So the weight saving will come from a range of areas as you might expect, with a few grams here and there. We expect most of the teams with their development cycles to be down to the minimum weight by the Spanish Grand Prix in May. However, the quest for weight saving, as with most things in F1, never really stops. And teams will continue to chase weight saving so they can then add ballast to the car to bring it up to the right weight, meaning the weight is better positioned. Thanks to Scarbs for this video and don't forget to subscribe so you can be notified of my race reviews and these engineering videos with Scarbs. Thanks and I'll see you next time.